what time? Okay. Uh, sweet, sweet. Nice choice there, Tom. You're welcome. Who was that singing? That is Eve Cassidy, who died way too young, but had a wonderful chunk of recordings that her family and friends have been putting out the last few years. So people get ready. Speaking of people get ready, I'm looking at this huge coffee table, what they used to call a coffee table book. Is that that's okay to call it that? Sure. Pat? Yeah. I, I didn't want to be... It weighs five pounds for I those mean, who can't really? see it. Uh, it's a huge book with hundreds of photos of Jerry Rubin, Abby Hoffman of the Yippies, and almost a hundred interviews with various male and female radicals of the era. It's called Did It, um, and we're talking to Pat Thomas, the author of Did It, uh, Jerry Rubin, an American Revolutionary. First of all, all right, you're younger than me. Just a tad. Yeah, so you must have uh, gotten into this guy... Uh, Possibly even after he passed, or well, no, he died in 1994, okay. and I was born in the 60s. So, uh, but I got into Jerry because I had a brother who was 10 years older than me. So in the early 70s, a copy of Steel This Book came into my house. Uh -huh. and the rest is history, as they say. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, and the 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 many many people you spoke to, um, you must you really scrounged around and found. A lot of folks. Well, I had the uh, help of Jerry Rubin's uh, widow, and so I had a, a wonderful Rolodex with Paul Krasner, Rennie Davis, Bobby Seale, um, Country Joe McDonald, uh, Nancy Kershaw here in Chicago, Judy Gumbo, all kinds of people. Right. right. For you younger listeners, those are all big names for all those of us going through college uh, at the time and post college in terms of you know, some of the shapers of at least the messaging and the music of the day. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it's an honor for me to be in, here in Chicago, because to me, Chicago's ground zero, 1968 Democratic Convention, uh, riots led by Jerry Rubin and Abby Hoffman. I thought they were led by the police. Well, you could say they were led by Mayor Daley. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, th you, this book says, is did it because Jerry Rubin wrote a book called Do It. That's right. <laughs> um, which was before the Nike uh, swish saying, just do it. That's right. Um, but uh, also because there was not evidently a book written about Jerry Rubin. And is that true? Yeah. You know, <clears throat> Abby Hoffman has, has been the subject of about four or five books. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jerry hasn't. One of the reasons is there's a there's sort of a, I call it a, a myth that Jerry became a Republican. Jerry did put on a suit and a tie. He was a progressive liberal Democrat. He was trying to get people to invest in uh, solar panels and green energy. So I just want to say he didn't uh, sell his soul to Exxon. He didn't become a Nazi. I'm glad you. I'm glad you're doing that because uh, I actually appreciated him more as he got older. He was, he was kind of in the same field as we were uh, in the restaurant business doing new age-ish. <coughs> um, That's right. Kinds of things. So uh, I, I got a little more. Um, a little closer to him, but I, I also was uh, guilty of seeing Abby first. Right. And uh, Revolution for the Hell of It and Steal This Book were two of the best things I ever read at that time. <laughs> right. Honestly, I, I just loved them. I, yeah, they, that's right. Because their, their fervor, especially as white guys against racism, it was a really important message to me to yeah. see confirmed that uh, white people who thought about things actually had as much fervor. Sure. That's right, that's right. Speaking of fervor, uh, why don't we listen to, uh, I think it's track nine, and, okay. and, and hear 11. Jerry's, okay, 11, if you want, it doesn't really matter, some, some piss and vinegar from Jerry. Okay. Right. Take okay. it away. <laughs> Too long, right? Okay. Thank you. Who's he talking to? Phil Donahue. Phil Donahue, Phil Donahue. I saw this today. Okay. Right. Hey. Wow. Wow. Uh, 
So that was on the Phil Donahue show. That's uh, the height of the Chicago 8 trial. Uh, Jerry Rubin's on the Phil Donahue show in 1970. And... Uh, you know, just spouting sort of uh, outrageous yippee guerrilla theater tactics. Right. So, do you understand that people like other activists around at that time felt uh, a sort of cringed when when things like that happened? Yeah. Well, you know, Rennie Davis said it best to me. You know, Rennie, of course, along with Tom Hayden, was one of the key leaders of the SDS. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, in hindsight. Jerry, with his sort of outrageous sex, drugs, and rock and roll thing, probably pulled in more teenagers than we did with a long uh, piece of rhetoric about, you know, the French going into Vietnam before we did, right? Right. I mean, kids don't want political science essays. They want uh, something a little more outrageous. But I think the problem I had is pull them in to do what? Well, what I mean, if sex, drugs, and rock into? and roll. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, you know, things didn't work out too well here in Chicago in 68, but, you know, there were a lot of other marches, there were a lot of other protests, um, you know, so I would, I would argue that, you know, you sort of need a combination of all these different factions, right? The SDS, Clean for Gene, were one group of people. Right. Uh, smoking dope and getting laid with John Sinclair were another group of people. Right. But everybody had the same goal, which is to get Nixon out of the White House, which didn't exactly and, happen. And to expose the hypocrisy. That's right. Um, which, one could argue that Abby, in particular, because he was the sort of great writer, um, yeah. and maybe even a little more of a disruptor than Jerry, but yeah. they were maybe the original disruptors, if you consider the current occupant of the White House the ultimate disruptor. There, there's an interesting... Uh, yeah, that's there, there's there's actually was an article in the New York Times comparing Trump to the Yippies. Uh, now the difference is, is the Yippies were for black power, mm -hmm. they were against the war. Right. Uh, they were for putting your body on the wheels. Yeah, uh, Donald seems to be uh, for pussy grabbing. Yeah. Very different. Uh, very different. Very different. Yeah. But yes, the other thing is, Jerry pointed out, if you give a long-winded lecture again, like a political science lecture, that's not going to be the front page of the news. You announce you're going to levitate the Pentagon. Or put, or put LSD in Chicago's water supply. That's right. So, you know, these guys were manipulators, but their, but their goal, I think, was... Uh, I think they were brilliant. Yeah. And I, I felt that way when I read Abby Hoffman, that he was fucking sure. brilliant. Yeah. Um, some of the nuances that your book shows. Now, you have... I, I don't know how much of this comes... Uh, how many pages of this in manuscript is your writing because you have all of these uh, interviews interspersed. Right, right. Um, and and you use them very well. The Phil Oaks story was uh, very moving to me. Oh, great. Uh, very moving. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, one of the things I want to stress, you know, this book isn't, isn't a, a standard Jerry Rubin biography. I go down the rabbit hole of many of Jerry's uh, contemporaries, Phil Oaks, Allen Ginsberg, Nolan Mailer, Tim Leary. Uh, most important books about the 60s tend to be written by white males, of which right. obviously I'm one, talking about a bunch of other white males. And there's a lot of women in my book, as I mentioned, Nancy Kershaw and Judy Gumbo. I interviewed almost, I don't know, about 25 women from the movement. And so for the first time ever, you're hearing both male and female voices. Amen. And I, I, I give you that big time because um, the props you should get for the quotes that are by those women talking about uh, dealing with those men back then, right, and and breaking out from under their shadow, yeah. and, and a couple of them saying that Jerry was one of the least, one of the more feminist of those guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's uh, right. Which I I could see just the way he uh, ran meetings. Yeah, yeah. You also had a, a moment in there where uh, Fred Hampton came and picked Jerry up at the airport because he was with Bobby Seal, and that's Jerry right. actually hitched a ride. But, oh my God, so cool that you've got Fred in there. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, a lot of people forget that Fred is assassinated during the middle of the Chicago 8 trial, and I don't think that's a coincidence. Yeah, we never forget that. December no. 4th is like a, a holy day of obligation here. That's right. Um, that's right. But uh, I'm glad that you, I mean, it, um, amazing that all of these people were in their 20s is yes. the other thing. People they didn't were have, so young. Yeah, yeah. And also, the the Yippies and the Panthers, they didn't have a Twitter account. 
They didn't have a Facebook page. They didn't have a LinkedIn uh, account. We had a lot of nickels and dimes for pay phones. Yeah, a lot of nickels and dimes for pay phones. Uh, and, and again, mailing parties. I just want to mention we're talking about a book called Did It? Jerry Rubin, American Revolutionary. In case you're wondering what we're yammering about. Thank you for so saying did, that. Do we have another clip that we want yeah, to Yeah, this is Jerry Rubin, uh, again, talking to Phil Donahue on the uh, uh, Phil Donahue show. Let's listen to track 13. This time I got the right one. Katie, hold the book up. <laughs> Thank you. Get, get in there. Get, <laughs> get in there. Can you put your head a little bit that way? Or the book, so I can get both of you in there. I can't see your face, Katie. Put it over a little bit. There we go. That's good. No, Katie, go back. Put your, right there, right there. Perfect. Thank you. Dozen. It was about a hundred people and about twenty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I, that's great. He that was the one of the longer clips that he actually got uh, a piece of talking in. Uh, I watched that show on right at five o'clock this morning. Wow, um, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and he in that clip he says, you know, America only responds to fire. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's exactly... Do you think that's still true? Uh, well, we've become, unfortunately, we've become a little numb to violence, right? Uh, Amen, my brother. You know, people getting gunned down, it's like, yeah, 30 there, yeah, two, yeah that's, that's too bad, right? I mean, we've but, that's become a standard... Uh, some of the some of the smaller sh well we're not going to report that one that's only five people oh my god right is he correct that we only respond or begin to change things if we're more polarized that was another part of that particular interview clip I know we just heard a little bit of it well you know it's funny like someone compl uh, was complaining to me recently uh, Black Lives Matter shut down the Bay Bridge in Oakland uh, at rush hour and some people were saying to me well. You know, they shouldn't have done that. They should have done something more off to the side, right? Well, if, if you're not pissing anybody off, it's not a protest, right? It, it, it's easy to drive down the street and, the, and go, oh, there's some protesters over there, and then, uh, you know, uh, have another drink of your Starbucks coffee and get on with your day, right? If you literally cannot cross the Bay Bridge, you're like, hmm, I wonder what Black Lives Matter are up to. What does that mean, right? Uh, there, there's another clip where... Uh, you know, Ruben says, writing a letter to your congressman, has that ever really changed? You know, have you ever heard a congressman go, I got uh, 50 letters today, uh, I think I'm going to change my mind on something, right? So, you know, you... Uh, no, but it actually does. I, 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 I'm, I'm one who always says, yeah. because, because congressmen who actually do sort of agree with us, right. they get to say, hey... I'm not the only one who thinks this. I right. got a hundred letters from constituents that say that want me to go even further to right. the left. Right. Right. I think it's one tool in the toolbox. It's one tool that's, that's that, needed to. Well, that's to make exactly change. right. Um, yeah. Actually, I want to again mention for those who tuned in, I'm going to be at the Seminary Co-op oh, Bookstore yes, yes. today, uh, which is at uh, 5751 South Woodland Ave. It's a free event from three to four thirty, and I'll be. Talking, debating with Bill Ayers, uh, infamous friend of Obama in the Weather Underground. You guys are debating, did you say? Well, I mean that in a playful way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because we've been playfully debating, too. Uh, I, guess. I think we're going to have a mud wrestling match, actually. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I think you should, uh, anybody who's down in Hyde Park should should try and catch that, or anybody who can uh, get there. Um, it's really be quite a, good a, one. a beautiful book. But it's sort of like someone told you, you have to get rid of these shoe boxes <laughs> of all these clips and magazine articles and whatnot, and you found a way to publish it. Well, I want to yeah, I want to mention really quickly that I was given full access to Jerry Rubin's personal archive. I went through about 10,000 items, phone books, letters, photographs, and it's all kind of captured here in a Very well done. world's giant scrapbook. Yes, right. World's biggest... So, scrapbook of the yippies. What would you hope someone who's part of uh, Black Lives Matters or maybe even hashtag Me Too would draw or from Archipi. this book uh, today? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Jerry's slogan, do it, right? I, I, I think there's a lot of us, and I fold into that sometimes, what I call armchair radicals, right? 
it's easy to be sitting there in the comfort of your home and uh, send out a tweet saying, you know, I hate Trump. It's another thing to organize these amazing uh, women's marches that we've had a few of. Uh, we had the great gun march, school children gun march last week. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jerry Rubin was many things, but the one thing he didn't do is just sort of sit on his butt. And he did, he did eventually also uh, promote working uh, in electoral politics where possible, electing good people. When right, they, well, when they appear having to be done elected. a book on the Panthers and done a book on the Yippies, you know, eventually a lot of these guys realized that the most change comes from the inside out. Uh, I lived, I lived in Oakland for many years. You go into City Hall to go to the county clerk's office. It's all African Americans working there. That's uh, some of the great work that the Black Panthers did. That's right. Did. That's uh, right. You know, Jerry putting on a, a tie, Tom Hayden putting on a tie and getting into politics, not the worst possible thing they could do with their time. Excellent. Wow. This is a treat. Um, do you have anything else you want to ask? No. I just want to plug the book again. Did it? Pat Thomas, author in... Uh, really um, scrapbooker. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead, Pat. And just say, come on down to the Seminary Co-op Bookstore in Chicago today from 3 to 4.30. It's it's free. Uh, you know, you can come down and, you know, pie face me if you don't like Jerry or, or shake my hand if you do. Yeah, I don't think you'll get any pies in the face. Um, Bill Ayers will be there with him, which uh, might attract the rest of you. Right. Um, really a pleasure. And uh, stick around. We'll... Uh, We'll yeah. ride back to Rogers Park together. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank Bye-bye. You. You're listening to Live from the Heartland on WLUW 88.7 FM. Please check us out on Facebook. All our shows are archived on YouTube.com at Heartland Media. And you can always listen to us on WLUW.org. Let's have a little musical interlude for our next guest.